The Hopi, the Kogi Mamas, and the Oaxacos Mamas, and the members of the Mayan Councils of Elders and Don Alejandro and our humble group from all over the world lowered our heads in prayer as the first flames began to reach to the open sky. Though we were from all over the world and from many different traditions and cultures, we all entered into our hearts and emerged in prayer with one voice and one heart. We prayed for Mother Earth and for her children, knowing that the Earth was about to enter into a very violent stage of evolution, much like childbirth. Each one of us prayed from our hearts for Mother Earth to help all of the world and all life on Earth. This ceremony was about three hours long, and about one hour into it, as I was watching the flames of the fire and listening to the prayers, the Oaxacos man... Um, uh, he was actually had his eyes closed. His arm went up to the sky like this. Uh, it caused all of us to look up. We didn't know what he was doing. And there was exactly where he was pointing, where he was pointing to in the sky, was a huge eagle just floating over the ceremony, about 100 feet perhaps in the air. It was not moving a single feather and seemed to be fixed in space without moving its wings. It sat there for over 10 minutes. And then the eagle floated off to the side a little ways, a few feet, and continued to watch as we performed a ceremony that had not been performed for a very, very, very long time. The prayers, the songs, the chanting, the dancing, the fire, the smoke all rising to heaven, where hopefully the intentions would be listened to by our mother and our father, our hearts were wide open. It was incredible, this, this whole experience. As we climbed into the boats to return to the other side of the lake, I watched. I, I will probably never forget this. I stood there as all these people got onto the boat, and I watched our uncommon group as they walked down the pier. Religions from the Christianity, Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, Taoist, Shinto, Hindu, and, Hindu, and many more, and all mixed in were between uh, were the ancient tribes from Atlantis and the land of Lotus. Don Alejandro and the Mayan elders were looking for something. I knew this in my heart. And whatever it was, they must have found it during this ceremony. For they asked us to do another ceremony in a, in a place a long ways away from Lake Atalan, a, a place called Tikal, an ancient temple site in Guatemala that represented the crown chakra in the human body, the entryway into higher consciousness. Tikal is a majestic world of temples that once had a city around these primary temples that extended for tens of miles in all directions. It, had, it was a huge city that had a, it probably housed millions of Maya at one point. I remember looking at, a, at, a, at an artist's description of this city and how it probably looked when it was alive. It looked like a city of the far distant future and space age not from the past and a people that modern uh, people think is just a modern uh, tribe, I mean a primitive tribe. The Mayans say that before Atlantis they came from the stars. And if you were to look at what had been discovered in Tikal in the, in the early 1980s and you saw this all, you just might begin to believe. We followed Don Alejandro and the Mayan elders up to a high place where ceremony had obviously been performed countless times before. And again, they slowly and tediously began to recreate the structure of the Mayan fire ceremony. This, as before, took over an hour, just to construct the, before even the fire was lit. At first, it seemed to be a repeat of the first ceremony, only slowly the atmosphere began to change. Every time Don Alejandro would raise his arms, up to this, this, this enor the, the enormous trees that were, we were cradled in, the wind would blow through them and, and around us. It was, it was pretty dramatic. That after about ten times or so, we began to expect it. He put his arms up and we'd just wait for the wind to blow. Then the light began to change. And these beams of light began to cut through the branches and the trees, making it feel like we were in an ancient cathedral in perhaps southern France or somewhere. Uh, tourists began to watch and found that they couldn't leave. It was so mesmerizing. There was a beauty in this ceremony. 
But I felt that Don Alejandro and the elders were still watching and waiting for something again. I couldn't help it. I, I felt in my heart, but I couldn't say what it was. I felt that they were looking for signs, like the eagle we talked about before, that could only come from Pachamama, or Mother Earth. No human being could make up these or influence the outcome. It had to come from Mother Earth. Whatever they were, whatever these signs were, they must have appeared, for we were asked to continue. The Mayan elders took us to another temple, and, and remote Mayan temples, one that I had never heard of before. I'd never even seen this before. But once I had seen them, and, and several of these temples, I couldn't understand I mean, why the world had known about them. I mean, they were, they were exquisite and held such a deep power within the earth. But we didn't do anything in these ceremonies. We didn't do any ceremony in these other places. Don, El Don Alejandro only wanted us to experience them, or perhaps for the energies of these temples to experience us. Perhaps now is the time to talk about the other way the Maya retur return their knowledge, experience, and wisdom, and memories to the present day from a distant past time that almost seems to be lost forever. They do this not with their brains, but with their hearts, something that the ancient world are experts at, just as we are experts with our brain. What I'm about to tell you did not come from Don Alejandro, but from Humbatsman and the Mexican Yucatan, and my experiences in that land. It is an information that has been held secret until just recently. I can talk about this, but I have to be a little careful in what I say. It was the Mayan grandmother societies that created the crystal skull pathway of knowledge, much like we do with our computers that contain memory for whatever we want to remember at a later date, so do the crystal skulls. And just as our computers are based on silicon to accomplish this ability to have memory, so are the crystals made of silicon to also contain memory. The first crystal skull came from Atlantis, but the second came from the new Mayan world after the Earth shifted and her physical pole shifted 13,000 years ago. Each crystal skull was created every thousand years and contained the memories of the last thousand years. Altogether, there are 13 crystal skulls containing the memories of the last 13,000 years. When it was time, every thousand years, a Mayan grandmother was chosen, and she would prepare for her destiny. She would begin by having a crystal skull carved into a human skull. It was usually a male shaman who would select the crystal and actually make the actual carving of this human skull. Different types of crystals were used depending upon the time and the need. It could take many years for this crystal skull to be made ready for the final ceremony, which the whole tribe prepared for, for ceremony for, well, for actually a thousand years. Then the grandmother would select a young man or a woman, and one time she selected both together, a man and a woman. To be selected for the Crystal Skull Ceremony was a great honor and a privilege for this young Mayan person or couple. Once the grandmother selected the right person, this person went into a training from the time, usually from when they were a baby, all the way to when they were much, much older, which was then completed when the Crystal Skull Ceremony began. This honored person would study to know as much as possible about everything that the Mayan nation knew at that time, in other words, really over the last thousand years. They would also embody the Mayan wisdom, sacred arts of higher knowledge, everything they knew, their memories, everything. They would try to put this all into one person. And, what, and this person, in doing this and learning this, would almost inevitably become a shaman in this training. When the Mayan elders felt that this person was ready and in conjunction with the Mayan calendar, they would, along with the grandmother, prepare for the sacred crystal ceremony, crystal skull ceremony. The destiny of both this person and the grandmother were about to be sealed for thousands of years. 